All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back into it, shall we? Oh. Whoops. Well, okay, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> okay. <coughs> I didn't even get to take an actual break. Been busy the entire lunch. Thought about it, play of all, but like I said, I was busy the whole time. All right, so. It's a lot of things I did. First thing I did is I stabbed Jay Palmer. Asking questions. Never question me again. <laughs> of course, Karen. Listen, Azeroth needs you, Karen Spouse. Oh. I was also trying to make it cooler here. It is a billion degrees in my house right now, and that is not a comfortable thing to be in. Oh, well, you know, actually, it just occurred to me. Literally just now, it just occurred to me. There's something I might be able to do. Yeah, that might help. Be right back. This really won't take me long. All right. So, ah, uh, yeah, it's just way too hot here. Um, no, that's the problem, Blade Twelve. It's so cool outside. It's hot in here. Points if you if you get it before I explain it to you. Oh wow, Jesse Ward, nice. Okay. No, it's not the PC. I mean, it, it actually, my monitor does generate a lot of heat, but that's not it. Bingo, Jesse Ward. It's so cold out, the heater is cranked. Yeah, it's just how that is. And the AC is, of course, not kicking on. So while I have a degree of cooling, it's actually not enough. Luigi! Aw. Uh, it's like 60-something out, Jay Palmer. No, it's not really cold out. In fact, I would say it's comfortable out, but that's kind of the problem. The heater's cranked, and now we have problems. Good evening, Huthor. I was actually wondering if you would show up today. To tell me about how it's all doom and gloom. Go ahead, I'm listening. I'm ready. Ready for the negativity. Let's do it. Let's do it. What are you doing? I like ice physics, right? Oh my god. So you weren't watching BlizzCon with me, Huthor. I see how it is. No, this is the second snow level. I'm actually looking for something. For why I'm roaming a little bit right now. No, this is tiny huge. Yeah. 
I mean, of course there is five. It probably went live the moment Metzen took the stage. Sierra, so Jesse Ward. Have a good one. Well, then get off my screen, you dumb thing. Hmm. I want to rescue Wario. As Luigi. Okay, got it. Listen, Wario's, he's just misunderstood. He's just greedy and, you know, misanthrop mis misanthropic and, you know, just generally evil. But, you know, those kind of people, they're people too. Don't they deserve to have presents and, and bouncy castles and money? Don't they deserve all of our money? a good question, Malachor. I mean, Mario Wonder did do a redesign of his iconic look, but that might just be uh, aesthetic, you know? Are you going to at least give me your thoughts, Uthor? You don't have to. But if anybody's going to disagree with me about everything, it's you. What do you mean, Rain 36? I mean, I just hope the Cataclysm dungeons at launch aren't, you know, undertuned, overtuned bullcrap again, but that's not here for there. They probably will be, because, you know, that was Cata at launch. be a little bit surprised if the subclasses do more than just your basics. Yeah. Just additional talents, you know? I guess this is where it wants me to go. Yeah. You there, the moustache. I'm the King of Cow, Chief Chili. I don't hope anyone challenges this poor area of moustache. In fact, I locked up one such fella just the other day. What a sad mangy moustache you got there. Oh, this seems worth it to destroy you. With a stash like that, you're clearly a sidekick and not the star. But I'm between meetings now, so I might as well. In the battle for the best mashdash, all win hairs down. <laughs> no, Huthor. 
Oh, oh yes, I did actually. Sorry. was that? Yeah, this is taking longer than it probably should. There we go. Oh, bull crap. What? what why? I was thinking it would be a Torghast 2.0 thing with Thor, but I suppose we'll find out when we get there. Yeah. Anyways, we have finally unlocked Wario. Hey, Seth. I was going to say, they've been experimenting with uh, scenarios since Pandaria. And yeah, they've bounced in and out of it every single expansion since then. We'll see how they handle the execution, which is, as always, where it matters. What's up, Warcraft Code? Look, you don't have the chance to say anything, because you weren't here when we were covering BlizzCon. You want to see my reaction to that? You're gonna to have to go watch the vod, which is already on YouTube, by the way. Don't worry, I put one time step in the vod. You know the one. Wario. I'm a Wario. I'm gonna win. I'm also worse than the other guys in every way, but that's okay. <laughs> President Blank McBlake face. President, I actually secretly leech the charisma out of the room simply by being in it. That guy. He does play different. He's a little bit heavier, which means he has different momentum. He doesn't have the same level of jump, but he also has a much bigger and much wider attack of attack. And he gets different power-ups. They all play differently. God, he looked... I, I, I want to stress that we, we make fun of... Um... I want to stress this. We make fun of executives all the time. Because, you know, they're evil. But, like... President whatever his face is... He looks wrong. Like, he does not look like a human being. 
He's just he's just CEO of 5000. There's nothing to him. It was honestly, and I want to stress that I don't mean this as a dig. I mean this is a statement of fact. It was creepy. Oh god, it was crazy, Huthor. The only person who had an ounce of legitimacy before Metzen was random art director guy who they pulled out four legitimacy points. I don't remember his name, unfortunately. It was the guy who was announcing the uh, Samoan Overwatch hero. God! Yeah, when, they, when the Hearthstone lady went out, and she kept... You could literally tell in her speech where the script said, wait for audience reaction or wait for applause. And so she kept pausing and then just nothing would happen, and then she'd keep talking, and that kept happening! Like, her whole speech, her whole presentation was just doing that over and over. Oh my god. I felt so bad for that lady. Yeah! Some people not, should, should not be on stage, and that lady is now one of them. Congratulations. No, exactly, Huthor. Like, I, I don't give them credit for that, or more accurately, I don't give them any leeway for that, Huthor. And I know you weren't watching, but the reason for that is because you have control over who goes on stage. If someone shouldn't be on stage, then someone shouldn't be on stage. Here we go! Like, that's just kind of the end of that sentence, you know? Which one was Holly Longdale? Either way, I'm going to disagree because that's a female name, so... I don't remember any females having an ounce of charisma during that. I mean, if anybody's legitimately happy for a D4 expansion, then I'm happy for you. Really. But... I am not one of those people. That's the nicest way I can put that. Get up. Get up. Are you joking? I am gonna disagree with Holly's the Holly thing. I think she was just as vacuous and disinteresting and uncharismatic as anybody else. Except for the present. He's just in his own breed of what is wrong with this thing that is attempting to appear as a human being.
I will admit from a purely selfish perspective, I hope D4 Lunt crashes and burns. And I do mean that with total sincerity. But not because I want it to fail or because I hate the game, but because I want someone to learn a goddamn lesson. And that someone is Huthor. Huthor, I need you to learn a lesson. True, Malachor. I know there's no hope and blah blah blah. I've been putting very sincere thought into asking to just kind of veto D4 on the list. I mean, nobody's showing any interest in it. So, I don't really feel like I need to pull that trigger. But I have just negative interest in playing that game. Ordinarily unlikely, Ross. Why do I think D4 is bad? It's trying too hard to be D2. It's too bleak. And... Well, honestly, I can actually stop there. Everything else is something that might get fixed someday, but that's the core reason right there. How am I supposed to do this? Wait, what are we disagreeing on? Is that it's a great and amazing, perfect game that's never had any problems with it ever, ever, ever. At least that's what the internet keeps telling me. Yeah, how am I supposed to do that exactly? I'm glad you like D2. Go play Path of Exile. No. Really, if you want more D2, go play Path of Exile. Ha. Actually, if I was to be completely honest, I would say tonally, you know what D2, uh, D4 reminds me most of? D1. And some people will think that's a good thing. And you know what? I am happy for them. I am, really. I am not one of those people. So what you're saying is you agree with me completely, Warcraft Code. Because all I said was that D4 is trying too hard to be D2, which is exactly what you just agreed with. Ugh. Right, we can go do all the Hazy Maze stuff now that we have access to Wario. Isn't that wonderful? Yay. I mean, we're past the honeymoon period. We're past all the good stuff in Mario 64. It's all bad levels from here on out. So that's just that's just our lives now. No, I'm not luring you. I'm being completely sincere. You and I can just... I said, you said, what do I not like about D4? And I said, 
the tone, and the fact that they're trying to appeal too much to the D2 crowd. Two separate things, story and gameplay. You then said, we disagree. I'm like, why? And you said, well, I think that it's trying to be more like D2. Explain to me the disagreement here, exactly. Oh my god. Um, this way. I haven't even been to the left yet. This is a different layout that I'm used to. Anyways, point being that I'm really, really, really thinking about vetoing D4. It's, and that's why, right there. That's the, the experience of playing Diablo 4 in a nutshell. Anyways, I'll, 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 let, I'll let the topic go. It's just, screw that game and everything about it. Alright, so, moving on. Why did we even bring up D4? Oh, I think Huthor brought it up. Huthor, I blame this all on you. How dare you? How dare. Do you mind? What's this? No, I know. What I'll do is I'll wait until someone to donate something big, and then I'll say no. <laughs> and then it'll officially be vetoed. But right now I'm kind of playing... Uh, how do I put that nicely? I'm playing chicken with my own audience. Well, uh, that's a good question, Jay Palmer. Usually I say, hey, I vetoed this game. Here's my reasons why. If you want to put that towards something else, let me know. If you want a refund, let me know. Any questions? And then the people usually say, Lore, you're dumb and ugly and stupid and worthless. I'm like, okay, these are all very strong, valid points. Uh, do you have anything else to add? And they say, yes. I want you to go personally punch yourself in the face. I'm like, okay, no problem. I also really don't like where the story's going, but that's unrelated. That's m much more of a personal thing. I don't like where d 4 story is going. Yes, I do know the plot, by the way. I'm extraordinarily uninvested in where they're taking the story. Here we go. I mean, it certainly sounds like a playful. I wouldn't disagree with you. And of course, since I am very much not a a Souls player, that yeah. Yeah, StarCraft, did you notice that one of the people, one of the only people who even mentioned StarCraft was Phil freaking Spencer? That sounds like a joke. Like, that sounds like the punchline of a joke. It's not. It's just the truth. The only one who mentioned StarCraft was the Microsoft guy. He probably does, Malakor. It's a great game. I I would honestly be, not be surprised if Spencer's overall project is like, so what are we doing with StarCraft? They're like, what do you mean? Well, what are we doing for StarCraft? Well, you know, we that was always vetoed. Okay, why? Well, they said it wasn't profitable enough. Okay, well, I'm your boss now. I expect to see some StarCraft content. Soon. Honestly, I agree with you, Master. That is a legitimate possibility. No, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Ah, uh, that was literally just a screw up. We're back in. Here we go. That's true. Warcraft Rumble. It's so good. I have actually played a bit of Warcraft Rumble. It's... The, 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 the single nicest thing I could say about it is it's not as bad as it could have been. And yes, I understand that's a low bar. And I stand by that. 
it approaches something that might be a video game under the right circumstances. There's, it's actually based on a similar format that I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of mobile games do. You spawn enemies, the enemies auto move and attack, you know, in a direction, and that's kind of it. That's the gameplay. Enjoy. If they had brought Metzen on stage to announce Rumble, I don't know what I would have done. Because at this point in my life, I got other stuff to do with my life than to do some big, demonstrable, like, aha, screw it, kind of a gesture thing. But I would be tempted to do a gesture just to th show spite for that action. Uh, game? Really? Game? Really? Game? Thank you. Game. Call that an RTS. No? No. That's not how definitions work. Yeah, the art style is extremely generic. It's that particular brand of generic, which is trying to look like the Blizzard aesthetic and failing at it. I've actually talked about that before. Some people call that the Blizzard aesthetic, and I get why, but it it isn't. The Blizzard aesthetic is its own thing, and remains that way, even to this very day. But all the copycats, of which there are many, have been trying to clone that kind of pseudo-Pixar, pseudo-plastique look. You know, over-exaggerated, um, kind of cartoony proportions thing for years at this point. What worries me the most about Warcraft Rumble, and I know this sounds strange, is I didn't see a, st a shop. There's no point on the interface for a shop button. And that worries the hell out of me. I... I mean, it was competently done by that one guy. Who's been doing competent cinematics for literal years at this point. Like, I, I, I'm sorry, I know that sounds dismissive, but it's like, it's another really one real done cinematic by that same guy who's been doing those cinematics for years. I don't, I don't have much to talk about there. There we go. Exactly, Blade Jamal. Hurricane, thank you. I mean, Hurricane stuff is legit. Uh, end statement, really. Well, we've kind of been interrupted a couple of times. Uh, whoever I said that, Ross. Like, we're only actually like five hours in. Here we go. Yeah, a shop, Warcraft Code. Purchasing, microtransactions. There's no button to spend money in Warcraft Rumble yet. And I really emphasize that word. Yet. Yeah, no, that worries the crap out of me. Even real mobile games, like good mobile games, have microtransactions. I've got a specific example for you. Fallout Shelter. Fallout Shelter, which is a real uh, mobile game, which is a good mobile game, has microtransactions. Warcraft Rumble does not. What do you think they're doing with that? In fact, it is an extraordinarily common uh, tactic. I forget what that's called. There's actually a specific term for it, for that strategy. It's the uh, start off at a loss, and then once they're hooked, start charging strategy. Uh, it's actually exactly what YouTube uh, and a lot of other things have been doing for years. Loss leader, thank you. Okay, so where am I going? I mean, the Blizzard Cinematic Team continues to be amazeballs. Or shock. Yeah, no, I actually thought that was a real person several times with the shots of the Anduin. Wait, what am I doing here? Oh, 
Okay. Killing rocks. Oh, uh, okay, fine, whatever. Yeah, no, that was a great cinematic. I, I don't want to sound dismissive or, or you know, negative, because the Blizzard art team is always amazing, but it's kind of a water is wet scenario at this point. The cinematic is amazing because water continues to be wet. Also, it's the best thing to come out of Shadowlands. Also, the only good thing to come out of Shadowlands. Long run subject. Hang on, I need to go kill Warcraft code really quick. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, Huthor, I know you disagree. But with uh, War Within, I can now firmly say that if BFA and Shadowlands did not exist, the game would be a better game. Uh, better narrative, sorry. Let me let me be more clear about my terminology. Would be a better narrative. Here we go. Legion leads pretty smoothly into Dragonflight. And Dragonflight is leading pretty smoothly into War Within. Like, Dragonflight is a perfect breather gap in between Legion and the next arc. BFA and Shadowlands are a weird guidance story. I'm not necessarily saying they're bad, we'll review it when we get there, but it, just, it has nothing to do with what's going on. Whoops. Okay, what's the caveat? What's the caveat? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready! I mean, I, I will actually agree with you that there are some specific story beats from both, actually, that would need to be retained. But I suppose my overall point is if we were somehow able to just kind of grab and drop some of those stories elsewhere, you know, without having them attached to BFA and, and Shadowlands as an overall, then I think the MSQ would be a, a smooth line. The example I was giving on camera, Huthor, is... Star Trek 2 to 3 to 4 to 6. I know that means I'm comparing 5 to BFA and Shadowlands, but you get my point. Regardless of quality, 5 has nothing to do with the Star Trek movies. And 2 through 6 are a smooth line. Five is the one where they go meet God at the center of the galaxy. And one is there. One is not as bad as I remembered when I went back through it for the ruminations, but it's still just kind of there. Here we go. One is just kind of I mean, yeah, it's a to it's an episode of TOS, uh, literally in some cases. Well, it's funny you say that, Jay Palmer. Did you know that with the infinite amount of spare time I have, one of the things I that I'm really passionate about, one of the things I really want to do, is I want to sit down and and apply my review system to movies and see how it works there. Um, the story axis being obvious, the gameplay axis being like presentation of the movie, cinematography, visual effects, you know, the the execution side of things. And see how the movies actually score while, while sitting down and doing a proper review of them. And the first movies I want to do... Really, Lord Aramont? Jesus Christ. Uh, the first movies I want to do are the Star Trek movies and the Star Wars movies. The ones I'm most familiar with. Just to see how the system works, like a test bed thing, right? So the reason I bring all that up is, is episode one, or it's episode one, wow, is uh, TMP... Uh, a wash, I'm not sure. But that's how I would tell them. Okay, what am I doing here? Hmm, okay. Wow. The only downside with such a thing is I couldn't do it live, which is how I would prefer to. I would love to be able to do that kind of feature live, but... Just playing a movie on Twitch, I would get destroyed legally. And I don't have Twitch's legal team at my back because I'm not a big name streamer, so I couldn't get away with that. Cool. 
Yes, because I make that kind of money play to fall. Okay, so I, I think I can make that now that I know the route. Oh, yeah, no. If it makes you feel any better, Huthor, there's one of the three expansions I'm really not interested in. Points if you can guess which one it is. If you guessed about the one that's going to be like, oh, ancient conspiracies and retconning everything, you guessed correctly. We'll see, you know, open mind and all that. Midnight looks legit. I talked about that during the stream. <laughs> if you saw me physically grown, you get no bonus points for this. I will say this, I'm surprised, if, based on what they're talking about, that there wasn't even a mention of Classic Plus. Although, the season thing might be the, what Classic Plus turned into. I am happy they remembered that they have lore in their game. It's nice that at least one other person in the world does. Yeah, I know, I'm not exactly alone in that, but come on. I think I've earned my chops on this. I will continue to admit a lack of interest in Classic Plus, but I'm curious where they go with it. That's true, Lord Haramont! I think Lord Haramont just told Mandy to shut up about it. That's the old joke, right? Yeah, we know! Because you won't shut up about it, Lord God! Oh, jeez, Wario's jumps are terrible. Oh. Hey, Tonarone. Which I'm probably pronouncing extremely badly. How ye be? Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, if they just make the game good, I'll be happy, honestly. Good for me, good for you. Good. There's a lot of definitions for good. God damn it, just make it good. That's all I ask. I did do a little cheater, Huthor, I'm not gonna lie. Although they're not playable still. Sadness. Thank you, Warcraft Code. I will take that. Um Oh, right, I forgot to do this one test time. Oh, whatever. Here we go! I mean, it only went in, like, about an inch, J. Palmer. Ha. Ha. I haven't seen anything about the Nerubians other than what was initially announced. Ha. 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 We'll see, though. I mean, I noticed they only announced one allied race, and it's a neutral. That's the Earthen, so... They could go that in whatever direction. I oh, damn it, come on, game. Work with me here. I honestly very much doubt they'll do a Norubian allied race. And I mean that sincerely. Can you guess why? Armor is basically the answer, but yeah, what it boils down to is the Nerubians are not an allied race. They would be a race. Like, that's a whole new race bracket there. And what everything that implies 
the benefit of doing an allied race is even though they have a few diff di additional like appearances and cosmetics and stuff like that ultimately they're just a reskin of another race an allied race takes tr a tremendously less time and effort to make than a new race does and they haven't done a new race since Andaria, I think. Let me double check that. Unless we count Warlords as technically. Which, I mean, counts. Yeah, exactly, Huthor. Huthor's got it. Oh yeah, I guess you can play as Drakthir now. In my defense, I haven't made a Drakthir yet. Because I'm going to do it on camera with you guys. What are they based off, Uther? I, I legitimately don't know. I like I said, I haven't made a drag theory yet, so I have don't really have a lot of exposure to them. Best power up or bestest power up? This is actually a real life image of Warcraft code. I'm kidding. Please don't kill me, Warcraft code. Isn't the Sethrak rig based on something, too? Am I misremembering? I know Volpera are based off of goblins. Interesting, Huthor. No, no. I mean, I've said this before, I'm kind of with the idea of not having tons and tons of new races. Because, you know, I understand what a production cycle is and what's required for that. Hell, I'm actually really glad they didn't announce any new classes. I know that sounds absolutely bizarre and definitely puts me in the minority, but I mean that. The last thing we need now is more classes and wow. Hell, I'm actually upset that we're adding new classes to FF14 with their new expansion. Although FF14 doesn't have quite the same problem that WoW does when it comes to that. Because any given class in WoW is actually three or two or four classes in WoW. Whereas in FF14, a new class is one new class. So that's something, you know? I actually don't remember, Ross. Have we, have we even learned all the new classes coming out in Dawn Trail yet? So I could pick any known artifact weapon, excuse me, any artifact in Warcraft lore, and drop it into the hands of a character in WoW at the time of Warcraft 3. To whom and what? Exactly, breakfast set, but that's kind of what I was talking about. Welcome back, Dark Prince Robin. Dark Prince. My knee jerk answer is the Dragon Soul, but what I'm debating is who gets it. Whoops. I. Double whoops? Oh god, we're about to triple whoops! Ah, there we go, we're okay, we're okay. Oh yeah, let's give the Dragon Soul. To Death Knight Arthas, aka someone who doesn't even exist at the timeline in which we're talking about. That sounds like a good usage of time to me, Dark Prince Robin. All right, let's let's just skip all this nonsense, shall we? Let's activate Warcraft code. Let's, let's fail miserably to activate Warcraft mode. Oh, 
No, why didn't you jump? You asshole! I told you to jump! I'm sorry, I was actually told literally today that I need to not joke with my friends as much. So I apologize, Mark Griffin. I am not calling you fat. You're not fat. Neither's Metzen, by the way, while we're on the subject. If you think that's what a fat person looks like, you haven't seen a fat person, I'm just saying. Yeah, he's pretty hot and attractive, but he's not fat. He's a Wario. He's a gonna win. Yeah, Metzen doesn't give a crap anymore. You can tell. And I honestly think that helped his presentation, because, you know, his attitude was pretty much spot on where it needed to be. Yeah, no, I think that a lot of people... I don't want to blame people for this, because it's not actually people's fault. I think that uh, visual presentation of human beings has gotten to the point in our society, in adverts, in commercials, in television, in movies, and in video games, where we see someone who looks like Metz and we say, Oh man, he's so fat! And it's like, uh... That's fat? Because, you know, we see norm, you know, the, the, you know what I mean. You know exactly what I mean. The norm has been shoved so far down that we're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, Metzen isn't actually that much older than I am. How's that for a weird thought? He is a little older than me. Like I said, I'm not blaming Magister, it's just I really do legitimately think that's a thing, right? That's a thing that we as a species are suffering from. I think Metzen loves WoW more than I do. That's his baby. He loves WoW like I love the Extant, you know? We're almost done sweeping, except for the upper levels. We're making a really good time, actually. So if I tell an Italian, you're awesome. It's funny you say that, because my sub hasn't run out in like two years at this point, Warcraft Code. Hell, I played WoW last night. I will be playing WoW tonight, by the way. The transmog changes. It's so it's funny you say that, Hudor. Did you catch that they're doing exactly what I said they need to do? Do you remember that conversation? It was, it was like a month ago. Uh, we were talking about perfect transmog in, I think it was in Baldur's Gate 3 or something like that. And uh, and I mentioned there's only like three things they could do to make it better, and that was one of the freaking things. Go up the hill. Thank you. Oh, I'm gonna go bonkers with the new transmog system. Are you kidding me? I might actually start hitting old stuff again. Just because I freaking want to. If you get a transmog unlock, it unlocks regardless of whether you can equip it, which is one of my biggest complaints about the system right now. For those of you who don't understand what that means, if you are playing a warrior and a cloth piece or a, a class-specific piece for, like, a mage drops, you currently do not unlock that on your account. That is changing so that now you will unlock that on your account. 
which is how it honestly should have been all along. If I'm being completely fair, I think that that was probably a bit of a spaghetti code to untangle, so I'm willing to give them some leeway on that point. A good question, Uthor. I do not know. Exactly, Magister. That was the other big change I requested. Make it so I can turn my plate warrior, my, you know, my tank, into someone who's wearing cloth. That's the final step of, uh, of perfecting the transmog system. After that, I don't even know where you could go. See you around, Master. Have a good one. Oh my god, Wario is so slow underwater. It's gotta be like half the speed of the others. I get it, you're not a swimming type. Which is funny, because strength should be your main stat here. Dies, I don't think, is really going to happen in WoW, honestly. That's crazy levels. Um, and I, I don't mean like, obviously games can do that, but the problem is... You, uh... Dies have to be designed from the word go, right? And WoW isn't. So, the only way to make dies happen would be to invent an entirely new mechanism to add color channels and then manually apply it to every piece of equipment in the entire game. And that is an absolutely bonkers amount of work. So I, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Now, a more reasonable thing, also kind of unlikely if I'm being honest, but a, a more reasonable thing to do would be to make it so that there's new armor which is dieable, and that armor is designed around dying. And that armor has the die channels. Oh my god, I'm gonna drown. Oh, that was actually really close. Jesus, Wario. Agreed, Huthor. That's the only way it could work. And if they did that, then th there you go. We have officially perfected the transmog system. 100%. Yes, I have seen the numbers. I would love to see some player housing, too. In fact, I've even had an idea for years on how to do player housing in WoW. Ships. Real estate is a real problem when it comes to housing, and instancing is its own problem. But make it so we have ships, and that's our house, right? And we could, like, move it from place to place, so, like, when we leave the house, the specific spot we leave at is different. You get it. And that is swept. Check that out. That is almost 100%. Not too shabby. You know what? I'm with you on that, Uthor. That's true. FF11 does do exactly one thing better than WoW. It wastes your time better. Alright, so. I know a lot of people are anti-garrisons. I'm not one of those people. To put that as just simply as I possibly can. But I should probably mention that uh, at least some of that comes from the mentality that Yoshi is just the best character in this game, bar none. Um, but that some of this from the mentality that garrisons were really close to being good and just didn't actually make it there. A good idea, bad execution kind of a deal. Unfortunately, garrisons are stained forever because of that. In fact, I imagine... All, I don't even imagine... I know a lot of players who, when they saw Order Halls in Legion, were like, Ugh! It's just gonna be garrisons again. It's that automatic, Ugh! mentality. Wahoo! 
you know, the shame of it is I really liked Torghast, too. Let's get life, because we need it. Now let's die instantly after getting life. Oh, we didn't, wow. Agreed, Luthor. It was too mandatory. Torghast should have been a playground. Was functionally a playground. And then they're like, oh, and you have to do this. Garrison's also kind of devolved into just being mission boards after a minute, which I think is another major problem with that. But that's the same problem everything in Warlords had. Development just stopped at a certain point. Listen, Warcraft Code, I got this great idea. It's this great dungeon, it's amazing, it's fun, it's awesome, but you have to do it once a week or else you cannot progress the main quest. I'm still thinking about it, uh, Lord Hermon. See, I thought of several artifacts I think might be useful, but then I run into a wall and it's like, well, who do I trust to use something like that? And it's like, you know, as of Warcraft 3's history, that's like, well, shoot, that's a that's a good question. I usually don't have an answer for that. Perfect example, Scepter of Sargeras. Scepter of Sargeras would be really useful, given its dimensional altering properties and its and its portal hopping. But who do you trust with that and what good do they do with it? Helm of Domination. Deal with the undead problem in a nutshell. Also pretty much completely defunct the first Lich King. But who do you give it to? Now that's assuming the Jailer doesn't exist. Which I do assume, of course. Yeah, by the way, anyone expecting the Jailer to exist in our Warcraft doesn't know me very well. Very true, Huthor. I mean, uh, all the artifacts in Legion kind of have this recurring problem of some of them just are clearly much stronger than others in lore, but they all need to be kind of gameplay the same level, so they are. Uh, okay, Huthor. Sell me. 
I, I don't believe you for one millisecond. Yeah, true enough, Lord Aramont. What I find funniest is they felt the need to come up with a completely new, uh, like, motivation for uh, Sylvanas when they already had one. It's like, you, you literally already had an interesting character arc for her. So a friend of mine has been going through WoW with me as a curated experience. I've talked about this a few times. And seeing through their eyes uh, a lot of the early Sylvanas arc of Cataclysm has been engaging because they've been really enjoying Sylvanas as a character. Which is just funny to, to say now, right? Also Lillian Voss, while we're on the subject. But then again, everyone's like Lillian Voss because she's probably one of the better original characters while added to the series. Yeah, no, Silverpine was actually quite legit. And honestly, so was Hillsbred. Hillsbred isn't as good, I would I would say, but it's still good stuff. Oh my god, yes! Othor, sold! Get this man a cigar and a yacht. What really irritates me the most about BFA and Shadowlands is they're not bad expansions. No, they're not. There's, a, 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 in review terms, they're going to be massively net positive. It's just, you know. I actually have a theory about that Warcraft. Stormblood I still didn't like. That is absolutely true. Stormblood Patch, on the other hand, is when they just sort of suddenly found themselves. So, uh, based on what we know, based on hindsight and information of what happened when, we can actually we actually have a pretty nice era. We have a pretty um, solid answer to what happened with Metzen. What almost assuredly happened is the original Microsoft deal was proffered at this point almost two years ago. Yoshi, I need you to knock over the cliff edge. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Krillmore, just go play WoW Classic. That's, that's pretty much its primary purpose, is to give you the ability to enjoy vanilla still. Hell, even my own Lorecraft doesn't really cover vanilla on purpose. So we know that about two years ago, the deal was proffered. We know that uh, the financial types started sabotaging Blizzard properties at about that point in time because they were trying to, uh, you know, squeeze the stone for as much blood as they could before they got kicked out. We also know that the creative types started getting moving right about then. Uh, Dragonflight was already well under production and, and I think actually coming out at about that point in time. And they're already thinking about where they wanted to go next. I think that based on the timeline, what happened was when the Microsoft deal became known to the lo to the people actually working on the games, someone somewhere, probably a team manager or a president, possibly what's her face, the one we saw today, personally reached out to Metzen and said, hey, so we're probably getting a completely different structure in terms of new content, uh, different management team different budgetary functions, different me diff different meetings, different reporting lines. There's a chance they'll be able to tell us, they'll be able to let us do whatever the hell we want to. If you could do whatever the hell you wanted to, would you come back? Metzen said yes, and came back last year, and has been working with the team on the upcoming story arc since last year, before since before he officially came back and started actually working at Blizz Active Blizzard again. He then announces his official return, starts getting a paycheck again, and now he's pretty much just working on that full time. And boom, there you go. There's the timeline. Also, this is the worst freaking star in the entire game. <sighs> For all the many, many, many things Microsoft does badly, they tend to allow their people... They tend to be... 
better about green lighting green lighting projects than other people do. Ah, <sighs> now I have to go shoot myself because I know students disagree with me on something, but didn't say what, and that's always like that extra little thing of well, what do you disagree with me about? And Anosians isn't going to tell me because Anosians personally hates me, like just on a very personal level. It's kind of it's kind of hurtful, honestly. I don't I don't know what I did. Oh, the star. Okay, see, this is why we have to understand what I'm being disagreed with on. Um, right, it's over there. I'm curious if this star is even going to give me issues in this version. It might. I don't know. Yeah, I remember that discussion. God damn this girl. As I mentioned, uh, this, the review of this game, or rather the original version of this game, uh, the, the classic version, actually kind of guided some of how we do the review system nowadays. Uh, okay, so... What do I give the artifact to? You know, since I have a very stupid question. Give the Tomb Hammer to Thrall. I'm gonna raise my eye about you really quick here. Just, just really quick. Also, he already had the Doom Hammer at that point. Now, it doesn't have to be Dragon Soul. That was just my first thought. Uther Frostmourne. I was actually debating giving Uther that Titan artifact that I can't think of the name of. The Paladin one. Paladin, excuse me, the Prodigan one. Let me be clear about that. No, not the Heladin one, not the Holodin one. Although, actually, the Silver Hand would be a good pick for Uther now that you say that. Truth card, that was it. It's right here, isn't it? Like, this this is the spot. I have to bring frickin' Wario for this nonsense. Hey, Melkor Blade. The cannon's active, wherever it is. It doesn't have to be a Legion artifact. I was just using Legion as like a guideline. Because Legion is just such a reservoir of artifacts in, in Warcraft lore, you know? Some classic, some large scale, some story significant, some not. But they're all artifacts. I mean, for God's sakes, the Scythe of a Loon. There it is. There's the frickin' cannon. Okay, so I do need to bring Wario for this. Who could wield Frostborn without becoming evil? Well, if we assume the Jailer doesn't exist, I would like to think in very, very basic terms that the Fro Frostborn and the Helm of Domination both kind of carry the same problem, a.k.a. a will save to wield. Probably regularly. Like, it's not like you do one will save and you're good. No, you gotta constantly roll that sucker, you know what I mean? So that means there's probably several people who could do that, but all of them are going to always chance rolling a 1, right? Yeah, hit me, Uther. So I, I, I wouldn't give Frostborn to anybody. For pretty much that reason. Same thing with the Helm of Domination. Thank <laughs> you. 
That's not the star I was going for. Uh oh. Do I hear an adorable niece? Say that again? Are you pizza? No. Are you pizza? No. You are pizza. <laughs> Admit it. No. I will eat the pizza. I, I'll go, go, go. No, don't eat my <laughs> brains. Brains. Oh. I'm a zombie. Oh. I'm a zombie. Hug. Oh, hug. All right. I'll be right up. Okay, kiddo? I'd like hug. Hug, 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 hug. You're just stuck with me now. All right. So I guess I'm chopping off now. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm not doing any hugs oh, anymore. We will do more of this. I'm not hugging. Okay, you will never hug me again. <laughs> I'll see you guys. And I won't forget your question. Hug. Oh, hugs. I thought, I, you would, hug. I thought you would never hug me again. Mm. I just give you lots of hugs every day. You do, and I love you for it. Thank you. I'm hitting my head. No, don't hit your head. Why would you do that? <laughs>